In America, we have a major retirement problem. And that retirement problem can be seen by looking at Social Security statistics. And they say that only five out of 100 people are going to be financially secure at the age of retirement. I know you are all the 5% that are gonna be financially secure, but what about the other 95%? What if there was a way where we could reduce the risks of failing in retirement, reduce the risks of running out of money in retirement, reduce the risks of living too long, healthcare costs going up, inflation? What if we could take all the risks that retirees face and we could eliminate most of them by changing one thing? Well, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you five scenarios and I'm actually going to offer all of you something that you're going to love. I've got a complete white paper that I want to send you and I will send it to each and every one of you that comment below white paper. I'll give you a full report showing you the numbers and the mathematics behind what I'm about to teach you. And what I'm going to teach you is how to eliminate risks for your retirement income. Let's dive in. So what I'm going to teach you is taking me over 20 years to learn, but it's so simple. And what I want to teach you is not something that any financial advisor is going to show you. And there are reasons why, but I'm going to show you what a financial advisor more than likely will show you. And that is what you've all heard by term and invest the difference, right? Invest the difference in your 401k and your retirement account. I'm going to show you why that strategy fails almost everybody that uses it. And I'm gonna show you how adding one, maybe two steps to what you do for your retirement can completely eliminate and reduce a lot of the risks that you will face into your retirement. And those risks are what make it so that only five out of 100 people will be financially secure at the age of retirement, like I said earlier. So let's just dive right in. So what I want to do is show you some of the risks that retirees face. Retirement income risks. Well, I mean, first and foremost, you don't know what the markets are gonna do. So you got market volatility risk. That means if tomorrow you retire and the next day the markets go down, what are you gonna do? If your portfolio, your 401k drops 20, 30, 40%, can you still retire? We're gonna cover that. We're also gonna cover living too long. You've heard of this. You can outlive your retirement. It happens all the time. People start retirement and they have a specific income they're taking and then as they go, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm living this long. They run out of money. That is a real risk called longevity risk. Then you got taxes. Our taxes are gonna go up and if they go up, can you afford to maintain that income into retirement? How about the sequence of returns? That's a real risk. When you're taking distributions from your retirement, what happens when the markets go down and you keep taking money out of a declining market portfolio? That's gonna really impact your ability to continue into retirement. Also, healthcare risks. Healthcare is not getting any cheaper, which means the cost to you are going up. All of these things, including inflation risk, play into the word uncertainty. Uncertainty about what is your retirement gonna look like. So let's just talk about what retirement looks like, but we're gonna go back in time. Now, this just shows you different points in time of the market. So like in 2011, we had the European debt crisis, which dropped the market significantly. Then we had the US federal government, uh, their credit was downgraded in eight of 2011. We had President Obama elected here in 2013, that dropped the market. The S&P then rallied and closed at an all time high before it crashed and burned because of the Chinese stock market crash and crude oil plunged. And as we go through time, all these different scenarios played out, including the pandemic, including the Great Recession, including the dot-com crash. You all know about these things, but what happens? What happens if you were trying to retire right before one of those happened? So right here, let's just say X marks the spot where you decide you wanna retire and you start taking distributions from your retirement account, like you were told. You did all this planning, you worked with your financial advisor and everything looked to be perfect. If all you took was four or 5% from your retirement account, you're gonna make it all the way until age 90. But then all of a sudden, this happens. Something completely unknown to you, the Chinese stock market crashes and you keep taking income 
from your portfolio during that small little drop in the market. What impact does that have on your portfolio? Well, I will tell you, it has a massive impact because the timing of when you take money out of your retirement account and out of the market makes a major difference of how your retirement will look five, 10, 15, 20 years into the future. But you know, everything's gonna be fine, right? The markets are gonna just go to the moon. Yes, but what if they don't? That's what I'm here to prepare you for. So let's run through some scenarios. And like I said, if you want the full white paper showing you exactly how this works, in the comment section, just put white paper and we will send you a link for that. So a lot of financial advisors and a lot of the gurus out there, I'm not gonna name his name, Dave, always tell you buy term and invest the difference. So what I did is I took a scenario. We looked at two different people, a 35 year old and a 50 year old buying term insurance. And we bought term insurance and we invested the difference up to the max into the 401k. So if you did buy term invest the difference, the good news is that term insurance might only cost you five to $600 a year. And you might be able to lock that in for 20 years, especially if you're the 35 year old. If you're the 50 year old, it's gonna cost more, but let's just use this. If that were your scenario and you've got your protection, let's just say you bought $400,000 worth of death benefit to protect your family. Hey, you're good for 20 years. That would give you the most amount of money to put into your 401k or your retirement account. So let's just say you took the difference, which was about 17, I'm just gonna round down, $17,000, and you put that into your 401k. That would seem like the best choice, right? Because you got more money going into the markets, more money having the ability to ride the markets up. That's all good and great, but when you retire, let's just say you retire here, and you ride the market up for the course of a year, but then all of a sudden the market turns downward. Some crazy thing happens, I don't know, a war in the Middle East, something happens like a president gets elected that you didn't like, and all of a sudden the market turns downward. In this scenario, you still need an income. So let's just say your income that you're taking is $80,000. So you take $80,000 that year, $80,000 that year, $80,000 here, I'm just making things up. That is what they would call sequential return risk. So what would this mean if you did this? Well, that means that you rode the market up for a little bit, then you took your first income or monthly income as the market was going down. You'd have to understand how drawdown effect works. Okay, and you'd also have to understand how taking $80,000 from a market, a portfolio that was declining, affects your future. And that's exactly what the white paper shows. But all I can tell you is if this happened and you took income early on in your retirement when the markets were down, you're not gonna make it. You're more than likely gonna outlive your retirement. So that's the problem. We didn't plan for any uncertainties in this strategy. We went for the cheapest term and we wanted to invest the most so that we had the most. And in this case, you might have built up the most amount of money. Let's just say you built up $2.5 million and you thought you were all set. In this scenario, you wouldn't be all set. You more than likely would run out of money. Matter of fact, you would almost certainly run out of money because you didn't plan for the down markets. So let's talk about strategy number two. So now we're gonna move on to strategy number two. We're gonna call this a covered asset strategy because that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna cover your assets. So let's talk about what these assets are. Just like the first strategy, we've got a 401k. We've got a retirement account in there. But you remember in the first one, we had $2.5 million because we were able to save more money in the retirement account because we bought term insurance. We put less money out for protection. We were able to save more into the investments, which created number one, more money, but another problem where we couldn't take money from any other asset class during a falling market. Well, that's what we're gonna change. So the first asset class of 401k, we're only gonna start with 2 million because that other $500,000 that you had in the first strategy got re-diverted. And where did it get re-diverted? Well, it got re-diverted into a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. So why would we do a whole life insurance policy? Well, we would do it for two reasons. And let me call those out. First off, a whole life policy provides guaranteed interest on your money. Plus, 
you get dividends if it's a mutually owned insurance company. So let's just say you diverted that $500,000 over the course of your savings for retirement. So let's just say it was five, 10, 15, 20 years, no matter how long it is, you built up $700,000 in cash value. So you got $700,000 in cash value. You put $500,000 into the whole life over those years. You have $700,000 in cash value guaranteed. But what you'd also have is you'd have yourself a death benefit. So let's just say, hypothetically, you got yourself a million dollar death benefit. So if you were to pass away and go on to a better place, a million dollars would be passed on to your beneficiaries tax free. Now, as we're going with this, there's one more asset we're going to use, and this is called a SPIA. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. It's a single premium immediate annuity. So what we're going to do is at retirement, we're going to divert some of the 401k money into the SPIA. How much? Well, that depends on how much income you want to guarantee. So it's a reverse calculation. So let's just say out of the $2 million, we moved 300,000 of that 2 million into a SPIA. What that might do is that might provide you a guaranteed income. So I'm just gonna write this, guaranteed income, and let's just say of $30,000. Now, whatever that guaranteed income is for you, that's for you to decide, and that's part of the retirement planning. So when you're planning your distribution for retirement, what we always wanna look at is, what are your fixed expenses? The expenses that are pretty much the same every single month. Well, once we figure those out, you need to pay those to live. No matter what happens, you can't not pay those bills. So let's say those bills are $30,000. Well, in this scenario, let's just hypothetically assume that 300,000 rolled over from the 401k into the immediate annuity provides a guaranteed income of $30,000 a year. You see what we did? So now we've subtracted 300 from the 2 million. So we only have 1.7 million in invested assets, but now what we've got is a guaranteed $30,000 in income. So how does this whole thing play out? Well, first off, you're going to take income primarily from the 401k. So let's just say that you need to make $80,000 per year. That's how much income you need. It's been adjusted for taxes, it's been adjusted for inflation. That's how much you need. Now, if it's more or less for your individual situation, no problem. The numbers are yours and unique to you. So if you were to book a call with my team to figure out how to strategize this, we would figure these numbers out for you based on your inputs and what you said you wanted. In this example, $80,000 is the amount we need. So we've already got 30,000 taken care of, which means we now need to take $50,000 per year from the 401k. So where's that gonna come from? Well, it's gonna come from your portfolio, which is invested however you chose to invest based on your needs, goals, and your risk tolerance. So let's just say X marks the place where you retire. So you retired there. We take 50K here, okay? That's your first distribution, which is great. You took the 50K while the markets are going up. But then the next 50K that you needed next year was when the markets were down. So X marks the place where you need $50,000. But what we're not gonna do, we're not gonna take 50,000 from the 401k. We're gonna take 50,000 from the whole life policy. So we're gonna take a $50,000 income from here. Why? Well, because this doesn't go up and down with the market. This only goes up guaranteed. So now we're gonna, we're gonna basically supplement your retirement income from a guaranteed source of money. And we're gonna take money from the whole life policy as long as we need to, to get to the point where the markets are on the way back up and our 401k is now at a good place to take income from. So what we've done is we've covered our assets. Follow what I'm saying? Covered our assets. Let's talk about those covers. We covered our 401k assets and allowed our assets to stay invested. And we also don't have to take the risk of taking money from a declining portfolio. What we've also done is made sure that if we die, money is gonna pass on to our family, to our beneficiaries, whoever you choose to, to send that to. If you died too early, but yet you gave up $500,000 over here because we diverted that to the whole life, that 500 you gave up gets them a million dollars so that your family will be able to live through that retirement even though you, the breadwinner, you, the person that had the 401k is no longer around. Follow what I'm saying? So we covered your assets there. And what we also covered is your income, your guaranteed expenses, whatever they are, 
Those are taken care of because we redirected money from the 401k from the market into a guaranteed vehicle that paid you an income. That's strategy number two. Now, as we move through this, what we're going to do is we're going to cover your assets, but we're also gonna provide a better strategy and a strategy that's going to work even more efficiently now that we can kind of see how this whole thing plays out. So the third strategy is a lot like the second, but it's a pure volatility buffer strategy. So what do I mean by that? Well, volatility is when the markets go up and down, up and down. Now, if you remember from the second strategy, what we did is we padded some of that because we basically made it so that you had a guaranteed income and that was from the SPIA, the single premium immediate annuity. Plus we added in a whole life policy and I will add a specially designed whole life policy. And what that did is that gave us the ability that during downward market pressure, we had some place to pull money from the cash value so we didn't have to take money from the 401k. But now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of throw in the infinite banking concept. Now, the white paper you're gonna get is not gonna cover this. Okay, the white paper is gonna give you five strategies which are all around what I just gave you. But now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, instead of using the whole life just to take an income during these downward markets, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the whole life to support another income. So we're gonna take this cash value from the whole life and we're gonna use that cash value to do a number of different things. Now that, if you have debt, the very first thing I would suggest you do to get rid of any volatility in your life, not just your portfolio, would be to get rid of debt. So if you're going into retirement and you're sitting on credit card debt, car loans, or anything else, here's what you're gonna do in the third strategy. We're gonna take money from the whole life, that $700,000, and we're gonna redirect that cash value through the infinite banking concept to pay off all car loans that you have. That's right, so let's just say you got $100,000 in cars, we're gonna use the cash value to pay those car loans off. But what you're going to do, and this is what you're gonna love about the infinite banking concepts, is you're gonna take the car payments that you were making. So let's just say those two car loans were costing your household $800 a month, which is about what $100,000 in car loans would cost. We're gonna take that $800 a month, and that $800 a month is going to go back into the whole life. Think of this like a circle, okay? We start with the whole life over here. We take a loan from the whole life policy, which is what you can do so that you don't affect the $700,000. When you take this 100,000 from the 700, you still have 700,000 earning interest and dividends uninterrupted. But yet we got that 100,000 to pay off the car loans. Then what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna draw a picture of a car here. We're gonna take that $800 a month for those two car loans, and we're gonna take that money and we're gonna repay the loans back to the whole life. Now, no money changed in your household. Remember that single premium annuity covered that $800 a month. That $800 a month was built into that necessity, that income you needed. So the SPIA is already paying the $800 a month. The difference in this is the $800 a month goes back into your bank goes back to you every single month, replenishing the cash value, but replenishing the cash value with the interest you were giving away. Because there's not a car loan out there that anyone can get from a bank, a car finance company, that doesn't include some type of interest on that loan, right? When you make a car payment, are you just paying just the principal on your car? No, no, no. You're paying interest in principle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take back control of the money we were giving away. And that is why I call this pure volatility buffer. You are purely eliminating any volatility in your life, not just your portfolio, but in your life, because we're gonna use the cash value and that cash value was created from redirecting money that normally would have went to the 401k into a specially designed whole life. The specially designed whole life is gonna be used first to get rid of any debt you have. I just used an example of a car loan, but you could also pay off credit cards, you could pay off lines of credit, and then recapture all of that money. Here I just did $800 a month, okay? And then that came back. But by doing that, this $300,000 that was moved from the 401k into the SPIA and provided a guaranteed income of 30,000 hypothetically, and I don't know whether that'd be your numbers, I'm just making numbers up here. That $30,000 in income is now all going back to your bank, going back to money that you can use later in your life when you need it for retirement. So by doing it this way, what we have now done is plugged all the holes in your boat. Because if we're thinking about retirement, 
What we actually can look at retirement like is we can look at it like a sailboat. Now, everybody's gonna have a different type of sailboat. So let's just pretend this is your sailboat. If you don't use these different strategies, your sailboat only sails when there is wind. The wind represents market returns. When the market's shut off, when the wind stops, your sailboat stops moving. You're a sitting duck in your boat. So when you're sitting there, this is you, you got a big unhappy smile on your face because your boat's not moving. By adding this, by plugging all these holes, we're gonna get rid of that because now what we're gonna do is when the wind stops, we're gonna add a motor here. That's right, you now have a motor on your sailboat. So when the wind stops blowing, you just turn the darn motor on. What is the motor? The cash value. The cash value provides an income because it can be used when the markets aren't going up. The cash value can also provide that buffer like I showed you before to take that income, that 50 grand you needed when the markets are down. When the markets are up, you can take money from the 401k, but when the markets are down, the wind stops, you now have yourself a little motorboat. That's right. Not to be confused with the other motorboating, but we're talking about motors on boats. Just getting your head out of the gutter. Now, some of you might be looking at this saying, no, 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 Chris, when I retire, I'm not gonna have any debt. Great, let's just say this isn't debt. Let's say over here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna now start buying real estate. Let's say you buy some rental real estate and you use loans from the whole life to buy the real estate. So now we're getting rid of the car loans and now we're just buying real estate. And that real estate's gonna provide an income and let's just use the same $800 a month and that $800 a month goes back to your bank, your cash value, which can be used to support income when the markets and the wind dies or doesn't continue to go up. So this strategy, the third strategy, is talked about in the white paper, but I added the infinite banking concept. That's not gonna be in the white paper. That's the Chris Noggle edition. And that's why I like to call this pure volatility buffer, because there is no volatility in your life because you don't have any debts. You have secondary income streams, whether it be real estate or lending or whatever you use the whole life policy to fund. And it also provides a buffer for when the markets go down. So in the fourth strategy that the white paper is gonna talk about, it gives you a fourth and a fifth strategy. What it's gonna do is it's gonna combine those two strategies, the covered asset strategy and the pure volatility strategy. You're either gonna have a sailboat that's operating when the wind's blowing into it, but then when the wind stops, your sailboat stops, or you're gonna have yourself a sailboat with a motor. And then your motor boat and when there's wind and when there's not wind. Again, the wind, is the markets going up and the markets going down. So all that white paper does is really dissects covered assets with pure volatility. And like I had mentioned in strategy number three, I added the infinite banking concept to eliminate any volatility in your life, or in other words, to eliminate any holes in your boat. And those holes are the debt payments you make to someone else. Because any interest you're paying to someone else's bank is interest you should be taking back control of so that that interest is now playing into your retirement. You wanna make more money in retirement? This is what you'll do. You wanna make sure that there's limited risks in your retirement strategies? This is what you do. Now, I didn't say no risk because there's always gonna be market risk and there's always gonna be risk of dying and there's always gonna be risks, but we're gonna eliminate them. We're gonna mitigate them the best way possible. So folks, when we're talking about retirement, this is about as good as it gets. So I hope you all liked this retirement education strategy because it's one that absolutely will benefit all of you. I don't care if you're retiring in a year, five years, 10 years, it might not be 20 years from now. The more time you have, the more effective this strategy is gonna be. Now in the white paper that I keep talking about, that all you need to do is down in the comments, put white paper and we will send it to you. It will go into five strategies and it will give you the mathematics behind why these strategies work. But the one thing it will not talk about is the volatility in your life the interest that you're giving away on all the debts that you're paying to somebody else. That's why in this strategy, what I did is I covered that. I used the infinite banking concept and that specially designed whole life to make sure that your debts were paid off and all the money you were paying to your debts are coming back to you. That means all the interest that you're giving away in your household is now being paid to you. That's why we always say the ultimate is you taking back control of your money by becoming your own bank. 
and that's what I layered into your retirement strategy. And all I'm trying to do is help you retire with the least amount of risk and the most amount of success so that you're not just the 5%. I want you to be the one person that they talk about. The wealthy individual out of the 100 retirees and the 95 that are not gonna be successful according to Social Security, that's not gonna be you. That's gonna be the people that buy term and invest the difference and do a lot of hoping and praying. There is no hoping and praying you're going to be doing because it is gonna be based on mathematical certainty. So if you follow this strategy and you wanna learn this, book a call with my team because your, your situation is gonna be different than the two examples in the white paper and the examples I gave you. So if you wanna learn more about how to retire with the least amount of risk and getting rid of all those risks I spoke about at the beginning of the video, then that's what you're gonna do is book a call. And you can do that by going up into the bio, click the strategy session, book a call, and we will talk about how this will benefit you and we will design custom strategies around your situation. So with that being said, folks, thanks for joining me. I hope you all can plan your retirement for success instead of failure. We'll see you in the next one. Hey, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, you're gonna to wanna to check this one out. It's called Be Your Own Bank. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're really gonna to explain to you how the infinite banking concept works. But we're not gonna just do that. We're gonna show you how you can build wealth through your own debts and expenses like I explained. See you next time.